In this video, we will review how to evaluate logarithms. So in the last video, we did example number one, and because we're in the same section, that's why this example is example two. And it says evaluate the expressions. Part A is log base four of 64. So I'm gonna begin by letting log base four of 64 be equal to x. So let's say I don't know what this log equals and I just call it x. So at this point I wanna do a, a bit of review and I wanna recall that if I have a log, let's say it's log base b of some number a, and that's equal to p, I can rewrite this in exponential form. So I'm gonna put this symbol, this double-sided arrow, and this just means is equivalent to is equivalent to what I get if I put this in exponential form. So the base of the log will become the base of an exponent. The p will become the power. And then the a will go on the other side. Another way that I think about this is a log and an exponential function are inverses of each other. So notice that the input of the log function becomes the output of the exponential. And the output of the log function is the input of the exponential function. Alrighty, so if we use that, let me just put a bubble around this. So if we use that for our problem, we can transform this to exponential form. So the base of the log becomes the base of the power. And then I switch the role of the input and the output. So x is now my input and 64 is now the output. And four to what power equals 64? Well, that means that x is three, three is that power. So thus, this log, log base four of 64, is just equal to three. So notice that what this log equaled was just the exponent that made this work. It was four to the three made it equal 64. So let's do a more challenging example. Let's move to part B. I have log base four of this complicated looking fraction. So let's start it off in the same way. Let's let this be equal to x. And now let's put this in exponential form. So the base of the log becomes the base of the exponent. And then, so the output, which was x, becomes the input of the exponential. And the input of the log, this fraction, now becomes the output. So I get eight over cube root of 32 over here. So this one is a little bit trickier. With the last one, 64 was already a nice power of four. So the 64 was already four cubed. But here, I don't have that same sort of base on both sides. So what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna try to get a common base. I'm gonna try to get a common base here. Alrighty, so if I look at these numbers like four and eight and 32, the common base is two, because four is two squared. So the left-hand side is two squared, that whole thing to the x power. Eight is two cubed, and then 32 is two to the five. But that's inside of a cube root, and the cube root I can rewrite as a one-third power. So now I'm gonna recall some exponent properties. So let's recall that the first property is if I have a to the b to a power, and then that whole thing to another power, we multiply the power. So this will be a to the b times c. Another property is if I have a to the b times a to the c, here we'll get the exponents add, a to the b plus c. And then if we have a to the b divided by a to the c, we would subtract the powers. So this would equal a to the b minus c. So b minus c, and let's put this in a little bubble. So if we apply these on the left-hand side, I have a power, this two, to another power, this x. So we multiply them, so we'll get two to the two x. On the right-hand side, I have two to the three on the top. And then on the bottom, I have this other power to another power. So I multiply the five and the one third. So we get two to the five thirds. And now, 
I can further simplify this. So we have two to the two x on the left. And on the right, I'm gonna subtract the powers. I'll get two to the three minus five thirds. So we have two to the two x on the left. And this is gonna be equal to two to the three minus five thirds. That's gonna be four thirds. And at this point, now I can say that this power two x is equal to four thirds. So I put this arrow. When I put an arrow like this, just a one-sided arrow, this means implies. So the fact that we have this previous equation implies that I can say this next step. Alrighty, and now if I divide both sides by two, we get x. x equals, if I divide by two, two-thirds. So x equals two-thirds. And that is what this log that we started off with, that's what it equals, just two-thirds. Returning now to our goals for this section, we finished uh, the next part of goal one. We've talked about how we evaluate log expressions.